Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi from scratch. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I plan to do a few more videos uh, after this to show how to set up uh, various servers on a Raspberry Pi such as UNMS, Unify, uh, Plex, Pi-hole, etc. So here is the groundwork if you are just buying a Pi and you've never set one up. This will get you going pretty quick. They are pretty simple. Most of the instructions can be found um, in the uh, actual box once you buy them. Now there are a few different uh, Raspberry Pis that you can buy. For this video I'm going to be using the new Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte variant. Um, there are other models such as the 1 gigabyte or 4 gigabyte 4. There's also the older ones like the Pi 2, the Pi 3B, the B+. Um, for the type of servers that we're going to be building with these in the next videos, you don't really need anything super beefy. However, I would recommend a Raspberry Pi 4 if you're wanting to run Plex, just because it has the better processor. But there's a bunch of starter kits that you can get. Um, there's like the Kana kit is the one I have right here. I have actual two versions. I have the uh, regular Pi 4 starter kit and the uh, starter kit Pro. There's also the uh, Pro Creators kit, and then of course there are the other variants of Pi, such as 1 gigabyte and 4 gigabyte. There's also the base model um, if you already have all of the accessories. The main thing about these um, starter kits is that it comes with the case, the power supply, the SD card, um, everything you need to get off the ground. Now these two variants I have here, the one on the right, um, the main thing on this one is it comes with the SD card reader, USB reader. So you can plug it into your computer to flash it and it also has a power button for the uh, power supply. Now the one I'm going to be using is actually just the regular starter kit because I already have a USB um, card reader. If you already have one then you might just want to get the regular starter kit or if you have everything you can get the regular base model. That's the cheapest version and all it comes with is the board itself. Oh and also one of the differences uh, between these two versions. The Pro has a 32 gigabyte SD card versus a 16 gigabyte in the regular starter edition. That's the uh, third difference in these two. Now let's go ahead and get rid of the um, other one and let's open up our Pi starter kit. So once you open it up, you can see we've got the documentation and just a couple cards, uh, websites. Uh, we've got an HDMI cable, so if you want to hook this up to a monitor, you can. Uh, an SD card that we're going to be installing the operating system to. This box is the actual Pi itself, the Pi board, your main motherboard if you will. And we've got the clear case that we're going to be putting the board in, and power supply. And that's all you get in this regular uh, starter kit. Oh, there's also uh, heat sinks in here as well. Uh, we'll be putting those on the board. And you got a quick start guide. Pretty much everything will be covered in this quick start guide. You really don't need to watch this video, but I thought, hey, why not? If I'm going to be doing Pi videos, we might as well make ourselves a starter video. Now the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the uh, Pi together in the box. You don't want to start using it before you actually put it in the case because um, the SD card is actually on the bottom. If you put the SD card in before putting the uh, Pi in the case, then you might break the SD card. So first things first, let's uh, just unbox our um, Pi board here. So this is actually most of what you're paying for. This is the Pi itself. If you bought the base version, this is all you would get is this board right here. You can see two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, and an Ethernet jack. Um, the heat sinks are going to go on those various chips on the top, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now the case for this, we got the regular starter kit, so it comes with the clear case. Um, the other one actually has a black case. I prefer the black case, but this is what this one came with, so whatever. Just take the top off. Also remove the um, middle portion to where you just have the bottom and all you have to do is just place the Pi on this board and you can see when the ports line up uh, that it's good. This isn't going to screw into anything, uh, nothing's really going to hold it there, it's just going to rest on this and then when we put the middle portion back on it'll kind of uh, snug it up a bit. So let's just put the middle portion on here, kind of pops down a little bit and after that we just need to put the top on. And oh, uh, I think we yep, we need to put it on the other way. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, now I just realized I forgot to put the heat sinks on, so pretty much gonna have to pop it right back out of the case and uh, put those on. So give me a second here. So yeah, um, in the guide right there, we can see where we're gonna be putting the heat sink. So we're gonna be putting it on this little one and these two middle ones here. 
So just pop the middle portion off again so we can actually get to these chips. And put the first one on. I'm starting with the little one. Second one on. Uh, I think I got it on there crooked. Yep, that's yeah, definitely crooked. Oh well, as long as it can dissipate the heat, we should be fine. And lastly, we're going to put on the other large one. So this is what it should look like when you're done. You got all three heat sinks on. And now let's just put the middle portion of the case back on as well as the top. And we are pretty much done uh, with putting it together. So at this point, uh, what we need to do is actually install the operating system to the SD card. So I'm just going to open up the um, SD card here real quick. Now the Pro Kit, like I said, it comes with a reader, uh, but I just happen to have one lying around, so as long as you can access the SD card on your system, uh, you can flash the operating system. So now if you've got your SD card reader, just uh, plop the SD card into it and plug that into your computer, and we will start downloading the software and flashing the operating system to the SD card. Alright, so now on your computer, you're going to uh, download uh, Raspbian first. So if you just Google download Raspbian, it should be the first link, raspberrypi.org. There's actually, um, well, this took us to Raspbian itself. There is noobs. You can put either noobs or Raspbian or something else on it if you'd like. Raspbian is what I'm going to choose. I think it's, it's the recommended software for a Pi to run, plus it's my favorite to put on it anyway because it basically resembles Ubuntu for the most part, and I'm used to working with that. But you can see we've got three versions here. Now if you're going to want to hook this up to a monitor and use it like a desktop or have any kind of graphical interface, you're going to want to get the uh, Raspbian Buster with desktop and recommended software or with desktop. The difference between these two is the one with recommended software comes preloaded with a bunch of other applications that you might find useful, while the regular one with desktop is just the desktop experience and you'll have to download any applications that you're wanting to use on it. Now the one I'm going to be using is Raspbian Buster Lite, and what the Lite version is, is basically like Ubuntu Server, if you know what that is. It is Raspbian, but you can only use it through the command line. There is no graphical interface. Now since I'm going to be using this as a server of sorts, it's just going to sit on the network and provide a service. I don't need any kind of graphical interface. I'm not going to be using it like a real computer. So just download that, either download it straight from the website as a zip or from a torrent. And while that's downloading, let's go ahead and download our next piece of software, which is Blaina Etcher. So just Google download, how do you spell that? B-A-L-E-N-A -E Etcher. Should be the first link, uh, Blaina.io. And what this software is for is to actually flash the image that we are downloading, Raspbian, to the SD card. The way you do things with a Pi and installing the operating system, it's not like a Windows PC where you boot up the machine and then install from uh, different media like a USB drive or a CD drive or whatever. You actually just take the image itself and you flash it directly onto the SD card, put the SD card in the Pi, and boot it right up like it's already installed. So I'm going to go ahead and download this um, on a Mac. They also have this for Windows and I do believe Linux as well. Yeah, you can use this on any operating system almost. And once that's done, we're just going to install Blaina Etcher. We can leave the image where it is for now. And if you're on a Mac, just drag that to Applications. If you're on Windows, go through the wizard or whatever it gives you to install that. And I realize I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Is it Balina Etcher? Balina? Balina? So once we have this open in our SD card in the USB thing in our computer, you can see right here we got got our generic mass storage device. Um, we can change it if there's another one. This is the only thing I have plugged into my computer right now, so it's the only one it sees. And we just select the image that we just downloaded. So this one right here, um, Raspbian Buster Lite. Open that up. That's going to be our image. It's going to flash it to our SD card. And we just hit flash and wait for it to do its thing. Oh, and apparently we have to enter our password here on Mac. Shouldn't have to do that on Windows. And just be patient. This is probably going to take a few minutes, probably five to ten minutes, I think, uh, is how long this should take. Actually, I'm going to start a timer so that we know. So I started that just a little bit late, probably add uh, roughly 30 seconds to that timer once it's done, but let's just wait for it to do its thing. 
All right, and it looks like we're just about to finish here. It's, it's already flashed and validated and unmounted the disc. So it looks like that took roughly, uh, probably about six minutes to do. So once you have done that, um, you are done. If you installed the desktop with graphical interface and you're gonna hook it to a monitor, that's all you need to do. You can just remove the SD card uh, now and put it into your Raspberry Pi. However, since we are doing the uh, light version in this video, we need to enable SSH before we actually hook it up to the network because that's going to be how we're going to manage this. I'm not, I don't plan to hook this up to a monitor, so we need some way to remote into it. And SSH by default is disabled on these operating systems. So what we have to do is somehow enable SSH before we actually plug it in to use it. And on Mac, I'm not entirely sure how to see it because now I'm unable to see the disk. I believe that is because it formatted it in a way that Mac does not understand. So I'm going to actually fire up Parallels here and boot into Windows 7. Now if you're on Mac and uh, you don't have Parallels or access to Windows, um, you can plug this up to a monitor and actually enable SSH via the command line. This is just the way to do it without actually having to hook it up to anything. Uh, but if you're on Windows, you really shouldn't have to do any of this. You can just browse to the uh, disk and you should be able to see the files. All right, so on Windows, just go to your File Explorer, uh, Computer. Uh, da, 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 da. You should see the um, USB. I probably don't because I haven't passed it through to the virtual machine. Uh, let's see, generic mass storage, let's pass that through. Device is ready to use, so here we can open the file, or open the folder, view files. And this is the boot partition, you want to put it in this file in the boot partition. And actually I just realized I haven't even said what file we're putting here. To enable SSH on uh, Raspbian Lite, all you have to do is just create a new file in the um, boot partition, just called SSH and it should not have a file extension so we're going to backspace the .txt yes we are sure we want to change the file extension and that's all we have to do we can now exit out of that and remove the SD card from our computer and now all we have to do is take our um, SD card and put it into our Raspberry Pi and the port for that is actually on the side opposite of all the ports and at the bottom so just uh, slide that SD card right into that port. Oh, I think, yep, I've got this thing upside down. So I'll flip it the right way, put it in. And now we can connect our Pi up to the network and connect to it. So grab your power cable, Ethernet cable if you got one lying around. And um, also, yeah, here's the power cable, which the power cable is USB-C. Just plug it straight into there, plug it into the wall, you're good to go. Um, if you do want to connect this up to a monitor, even with uh, Raspbian Lite, or if you install the desktop experience, um, just use the HDMI cable that came with it. That plugs in right next to the uh, power cable. And then that's all you have to do. So I'm going to take mine uh, downstairs real quick and just um, plug it into my edge router. So as you can see, I've got it plugged into uh, port Ethernet 1. And I'm just going to leave it on top of that. It's connected to the network. It's going to grab an IP address through DHCP. And then we're going to have to find out uh, what IP it grabbed and then try to SSH into it. All right, so let's exit out of uh, Windows 7 here for a minute. Now to find out um, which IP address we grabbed, we're going to go into our DHCP server. So me personally, I am running an Edge Router X, so I'm going to log into that. If you're not running an Edge Router X, then your steps are going to be a little bit different. Uh, depends on the router that you're using as to uh, where you're going to see which IP it grabbed. Another way to do it again is if you have a monitor you can plug it up to that and then do an ifconfig command and uh, see which IP it grabbed. But since I'm not using a monitor I'm going to be relying on my DHCP server. I'm gonna go I'm gonna view the leases and I'm gonna look for one with a host name Raspberry Pi. So the IP that it grabbed was 10.90.90.104 so on a Mac you can just open up a terminal if you're on Windows, you might want to download something like PuTTY, any SSH client, really. And just do SSH. Um, I believe the username, the default username is uh, Pi. And the IP address of it, which I already forgot what it was, 104. Accept the key and enter the password. Um, 
what is the default password? I think it's just password. I oh, know, I think it's Raspberry. Yep, so default username and password is username pi, password Raspberry. And we are now in our Raspberry Pi. It is working. Uh, the command that I was talking about earlier, ifconfig, if you uh, want to hook this up to a monitor and figure out what the IP is, it's right here. And backtracking a bit, if you don't want to uh, put the SSH file into the boot directory, enable, to order, um, enable SSH, um, if you'd rather hook this up to a monitor, you can. And you can just do a sudo raspi-config and go down to interfacing options number five, SSH, and enable. So would you like the SSH server to be enabled? Yes. That's how you would enable SSH on the Pi uh, without doing that... Um, putting the file down in the boot directory. So that is pretty much it. We took a Raspberry Pi out of the box, put it together, installed the operating system, connected it to the internet, and now we are able to do whatever it is we want with it. So be on the lookout for some new videos where I'm gonna show how to set up things like UNMS, Unify, various other uh, servers that you would typically use a Raspberry Pi for in your home lab. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. Uh, Leave your comments down below. I try to read and reply to all of them. Also leave your ideas for uh, future videos that I should make. Maybe something you want me to install on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, just let me know. And uh, as always, happy networking.